one of the things I have to do is reseal this trim around my bathroom because I don't have good ventilation in here. I don't have a fan. I do have this little fan that I use. It, a lot of like the paint starts peeling back and this has just been in here for years. <clears throat> to add an extra layer of pr protection um, from like mold and whatnot, I'm gonna reseal it and then around the bathroom. Lately, I have been tired. I meant to get this video edited and uploaded earlier in the week, but I've had very little energy. I've also had very little interest in being connected to social media or sharing. I value sharing, I enjoy sharing, but the last few weeks, even when I'm working out in my shop, I barely pick up my phone, let alone film anything to put online. Honestly, I'm just trying to go with it. I think it's okay, even when your livelihood depends on being out there on social media. I recently read a quote that said something to the extent of, nothing in nature blooms all year long, so why do we expect ourselves to? It really resonated with me. I'm someone who puts a lot of pressure on myself to do things I think I should do, like post regularly on social media. I'm an artist and a creative, and well, I look at it as part of my job, but I'm also someone who, when I don't feel like doing something, it's really hard to get me to do that very thing. I've noticed something shifting inside of me lately and I'm just trying to go with it. Nothing in life says we have to continue doing the same thing all the time. We are allowed to grow and change and ebb and flow. And I'm doing my best to give myself a little space to do just that. My goal for the month of December was to slow down, be more intentional, and allow time for rest. This is usually my busiest time of year, but I really just didn't have it in me to do all the things I normally would do. In all honesty, do I even want to do those things anymore? I'm in this waiting period where I've let go of things in my business and my life that I no longer want to do, and some other things have started to come in big things that I'm really excited about and will share more soon. I'm also still going through maintenance cancer treatment and will be doing so for a really long time. And to be honest, it's beginning to catch up with me just a little bit more. The fatigue, the nausea, the achy joints and muscles coupled with the shorter, colder days have me moving just a bit slower altogether. I'm trying to trust right now that it will all work out that I am meant for something great, that I can make all these changes I hope to make in my life and take the time to rest and heal. On top of that, I'm longing to finish all of these half-started projects in my home and want to prioritize that as I move through the end of the year. Overall, I am just doing my best. I'm far from perfect and need to remember that it is okay. I don't need to be. I just need to be me.
I'm realizing that I need to apply the same philosophy to my business and my home projects. I'm only one person still going through a lot and what I can give right now has to be enough. The other day I was speaking with my therapist about how overwhelmed I am trying to run my own business while going through treatment still and all the side effects that come with that. From healing from the last year, being a good friend, sister, daughter, and aunt, it feels like there is never enough time for it all and with my low energy, there really isn't enough time. Every day I wake up and I feel this rush to get things done before the massive fatigue settles in. So we came up with a plan. Every day I'm to write out the most important things I need to get done. The things that will make me feel less overwhelmed and more accomplished. On that list though, I need to write down rest and going slow because those things are really important too. The idea is that it helps to get things out of my mind onto a list and then just to be able to cross things off and visually see that I am in fact accomplishing things. I am moving forward. To give you an idea of what happens when you don't have a fan, this is like years and years and years. Show the peel. Most of this off. But that's gonna be a phase two project because I just wanna get this, I just wanna get this other stuff done. I'm not sure if this will help you too, but it sure clicked for me. Just the idea of being able to write down the rest as a priority was pretty mind blowing. I realize I will always have a million things to get done, but there is some level of peace that comes with the idea that today I only need to get done what I put on my list.
Okay, so today my mom and I are doing a long-standing tradition in our family. Except there's one problem. I still don't know how to make it. And that is my mom's Terry's terrific toffee. So she's gonna try to teach me today because it's been 30 years and I've tried multiple times and I still burn it every single time. This is my opportunity to have a cooking show. Yeah. This is my mom. Hello. She has been in other videos before, but this is her, not her recipe because I took a candy making class about 40 years ago and we learned to make this a bunch of a different kind of candies, but this has been everybody's favorite. So uh, we named it Terry's Terrific Toffee. It's very simple to make. It just takes uh, doing it a few times, getting the feel of it. Uh, I can't even, I, so many people have asked me for the recipe and I've given it to them and then they call me and say, it didn't work, what happened? I did something wrong. You know what, you just, certain things when you cook, you have to just get the feel for it when it's right. So here we go. Always have to use a heavy, a heavy pan. Oh my God, Mom, this is so... I know, this is an old beat up pan, but I love it. It is my toffee pan, and I'm not gonna get rid of it, okay? <laughs> it's a heavy, good pan. It's old, but it's good. Why are we on the back burner? Because I, the front burner is a smaller burner. See, it's a smaller flame. And this one, there's something wrong with it. It doesn't. This one's the biggest burner, but it's really hard to light. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it doesn't have okay. good light. Okay, but, so uh, I, I turned it down to medium high, okay? You, you really want to watch the heat when you're making candy. And you never want to double a recipe. So, look, ah. whoops, uh, butter's melting. Let's get that butter out there. Okay, now you're gonna take the sugar. Sugar. A cup and a half. Sugar. And melt it in. Already, but the butter's not melting. Yeah, it's yet. okay. It's all right. It'll all melt. A little bit more. That's like two cups. No, that's not two cups. That's a cup and a half. That's not a cup and a half. Okay, a cup and three, of course. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. So you're just gonna get that so it's all nice and melted. I'll stir. I'll stir. You don't have to go quite so melt. No. A little stir, and you can let, you can walk away for a minute. Like I always, well, it's, well, it's getting kind of bubbly. I'll, I'll come over and unwrap the Hershey bars, and I've chopped up my pecans in the food processor beforehand. Okay, it's good. It's looking good. It's getting real frothy and frothy and frothy. But you got to go a couple more minutes in here because it's going to start turning caramely color. I know it gets tiring. That's why I can make like two, three batches and then I'm done. Then I have to make it. If I want to make more, I got to do it the next day. It's just, it's a lot of stirring and hot. Some people probably use a candy thermometer, but I never have. I just, I just know the feel of it. You're a badass. I'm a badass, yeah. Candy making badass. So, how many people in our family actually can make this? Carrie, my daughter-in-law, my sister-in-law. She's the only one. Yeah, it's all her kids love it. My oldest son loves it. And so, here. See how thick it is now? We're getting close. We're getting close. Okay, this so. is where it always goes to shit. I know, but see, it can start thinning out here. It can start getting kind of liquidy. The butter separates, and that's okay. You can't panic. You just have to, like, keep stirring. It takes patience. This takes patience. You can't hurry it along. Because when it goes back together, then it's like that really creamy. Yes, it does. Yes. It just has to get through this stage. And this is where everybody panics and gives up. See how it's thinning out a little bit now? It's getting kind of bubbly. Kind of get it to get back together. Because it's kind of separating now. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have to stir it really fast to get it back together. I'm telling you, because I touched it. What happens every single time and I have to throw it out. So just for the record, this is not how this it's is, supposed to turn out. Yes. And I am pretty confident that's because I made it because this is how it always turns out for me when I make it. So because this is all going to my nurses doctor on Friday. When I go in for immunotherapy, my mom's gonna make it this time. This is 
slowly melt the butter. Slowly melt the butter. It's normal, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know if the butter was room temperature to, cold, to room temperature. I don't know. Okay, if this one doesn't work, then I think that I just shouldn't even be in the room. <laughs> Skills. Candy making, making is not can't, can't be good at everything, you know? Pick and choose. Coffee making, take two. <laughs> hey, some of the cooking shows they have to do like five or six takes over one little recipe. It's not your fault, Mom. It's my fault. That already looks more normal. Thank God the recipe will not die with my mom and that somebody in this family knows how to do it. I don't know what's what is not working. Hmm. It's it's just it's got to be the butter. Well, it's like oh, it's like there. Can you just keep going? Come on, you go. Nope. I just gotta put it down in case it's. I bet if I left and I went downstairs and you made a batch, okay, I'm gonna pour it. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm running out of supplies so it'll make more bad. So this is how the toffee is supposed to turn out. My mom made a couple batches while I was not in the room, which I believe is the ultimate secret to making this toffee is don't let me be near it.